Good morning, afternoon, or evening. My name is Ben, and this is part 10-ish. I think it's 10. It's been so long of our Risk of Flame tutorial that was based on or inspired by the game Risk of Rain. And I do apologize that it's been so long since I've done one of these videos. I've been really, really busy, and this, this series takes a lot of preparation. Uh, it takes me a while to figure out the best... I, I literally have to step through the entire video before I do the video and figure out what I'm going to do, make sure that everything works, make, make sure that I can explain it well. So this video takes a little more preparation than my pixel art videos, which are just, I just start doing pixel art. These ones take a little bit more. So that's why I've been busy lately and I haven't had a chance to get one. But here one is, and I'm actually going to try and do two of these today to try and make up for it. So hopefully you guys will forgive me, and let's get started. So first things I want to do is show you a couple glitches that are still in the game. And these glitches are just from our logic. Dang it, I wasn't fast enough, okay. <laughs> we got to run it one more time. So one thing you'll notice is... <clears throat> If I run over here really quick to the edge, this enemy freaks out right there. And then another problem is if I run this way, it lands inside of that enemy and then they won't move. So those are two both pretty bad glitches and we want to fix both of them. So let's fix the freaking out glitch first. So you want to come into our enemy object right here and come into the step event. So why does that enemy freak out like that? Well, let's look at our code here real quick. This check right here says if the distance to the player is greater than or equal to 8, move towards the player, right? Well, guess what? When the enemy is up on that ledge thing, he's, the distance is still greater than or equal to 8. But the problem is he's stuck up on the ledge, so he's trying to move towards the player and he kind of moves back and forth up there trying to move towards the player but he can't move towards the player because he's on the ledge and because we're only moving in the x direction but we're checking in all directions so that's where our problem is so what we want to do is only check the x direction and the way we do that is we compare distance to point with the player's x position but the enemy's y position so what that'll do is it'll check on a horizontal plane. So if the player's, you know, 30,000 feet under the ground, uh, but the enemy is right above the player, as far as this check goes, it thinks it's, you know, close to the player. So that's the first uh, fix right there. And let's go make sure that that works. Whoa! Okay, that was fast enough. Good. So you can see now that he uh, doesn't freak out. But we still have this glitch where he lands inside the other one and they're stuck. So let's do... I, I messed around with a couple different ways to fix this and one that I found that worked well is just to do a collision event with the enemy. And we'll write a simple little code here. And this code is going to be if Let's see. Let's do if x is greater than other dot x. So if we are further to the right than the other one, else if x is less than other dot x, which would be if we're further to the left, right? and else, which is just if our x positions are equal. So in this check, if we are further to the right than the other player, and we want to move outside of it, we want to move even more to the right, because we're already a little bit to the right of it, so we want to move even more that direction. So we're going to do if x plus 2, y, uh, let's see, <laughs> if place free x plus 2, y, so we want to make sure that we can move that direction, make sure there's not a wall, x plus equals 2. And I've forgotten one of my parentheses here. Now we'll do if place free 
x minus 2, y, x minus equals 2. So if, we're, if we are further to the left than the other object, then we want to move to the left even more. And, and so that's what we're going to do. Now, if our x positions are equal, this one's tricky, and I'm not exactly sure if this logic will work. The odds of their x position being exactly equal are pretty low but I guess it could happen. So I wanted to put this in, but I'm not sure that this logic is sound. So just so you know, we might have to fix this later. But I haven't been able to even see if this would work or not because of the chances of getting an enemy to land exactly inside of another enemy. So um, what I want to do is just to at it if place free x plus 2 y x plus equals 2 well let's do x plus equals 2 else if place free x plus or x minus 2, y, x minus equals 2, and let's see, I forgot another parenthesis right here. And here's the reason this logic doesn't feel sound to me. Because the collision event is going to run in both enemies, so I feel like both of them are just going to move towards the right. And because they're... Oh, I wonder if I could check against their IDs. Oh, that's a good idea. That is a really good idea. I've never thought of that before. Huh. So um, let me show you guys something really useful that you're going to want to be doing probably a lot. I'm going to pull up the GameMaker help file right here. And I'm going to search instance ID and see what this does. Returns are real. So this this is going to return the ID of this current instance. And that loops through all the instances. Okay. Well this needs that might not be what I want. There might be one that's just ID returns real. Oh yeah, this should grab the ID, I think. Instance ID, you actually pass it a, a number to find out which instance. This one should just grab the current ID of our object. So let's try this one. And this is a good idea. <laughs> so let's do if id is greater than or equal to other dot id else okay and then we're going to have our same code like this now this just checking against the ids is just a way for me to distinguish between the two objects that are colliding so i can move one of them one direction and then one of them the other direction. That's the logic behind this code. So if you need to pause and copy this down, go ahead, it's kind of complicated and it might not make a lot of sense to you, but what happens is when these two objects collide, they both have a collision event and they're both gonna do the same thing. If I just do this up here, if place free, x plus equals two, then they're both gonna move to the right. And so then they're going to stay stuck still. So you have to have a way to distinguish between the two. And I'm using their x positions to distinguish between the two right here. But if their x positions are exactly the same, then I have to use something else to distinguish between the two objects. So I'm going to use their IDs. So that's how this code works. And 
Hopefully it actually works. Let's run it in the game and see. Oh crap, I hate it when that happens. I didn't move over fast enough, too slow. Let's try this again. No, 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 ah man, it keeps. It's not focusing on the window for some reason and I don't know why. There we go, I made it, okay. And land inside, and you can see that it did kind of land inside, but it bumped right out. So at least that works. Now I think there might be one way for me to test. Um, I think if I put two objects directly above each other, that this will be able to test our other code. So let's find out what happens. This is like, I don't think that an enemy is ever going to land inside of another enemy. And look, it must have worked because they're not inside of each other. So. As far as I can tell, in fact, let's do one more test. I'm going to move these over so that we can see them right when the game starts and see what happens. I want to make sure this works. Awesome. Yep, you can see they are not inside of each other. And, man, that code actually works pretty good. I've never been able to figure out a code like that, and this is useful because... Yeah, that's cool. I'm glad I thought of that. Huh. So much for all of my preparation. I came up with something on the spot. So <laughs> that's awesome. Well, uh, thank you guys for watching. I'm going to stop this video right now so it doesn't take too long to process. And then I'm going to make another one that will probably actually be a longer video and will take longer to process. So don't expect that one until tonight. But thank you guys for watching. Make sure you like, favorite, go like my Facebook, follow me on Twitter, whatever. Everything you guys do has been, has been very supportive so far, and I really appreciate it. So I will talk to you guys later.